Hi guys, uh, this is just a little tutorial to uh, show you guys how to record and uh, effectively use the effects engine in Magic Q. Uh, I noticed quite a lot of you guys are uh, saying that you don't really understand um, how to get moving heads and uh, decent effects going um, using Camsys, which is totally understandable. When I started using it, I found it a bit of a nightmare until someone showed me how. So hopefully this goes uh, a little way to helping you. So first things first, this is a uh, brand new empty project um, which I've opened up as. Uh, oh no, that's not what I want. It's a new uh, and it's a normal show. Right. So first things first, we need to patch a couple of heads in, and for this demonstration, I'm going to use some expensive lights, some uh, clay packy sharpies. Um, so if I want to start getting the uh, fixtures in, first things first, I need to go over here to uh, the patch button, hit patch, and uh, in here we'll see our DMX. So well, you've got the choice of viewing the heads that you've got patched in, or viewing uh, your DMX address, and we're going to look into this to start with. Um, so first things first, we're looking at Universe 1, Channel 1, um, and uh, we're going to choose head, and we go to clay pack key, Sharpie, and we're going to use the standard 16 channel mode for this. Uh, now to get that into uh, into Magic Q, we're going to hit patch it, um, and it'll come up with patching first head into the visualizer, which we want to hit yes, because then it'll come up in here. So for this demonstration, we're going to have four of them. So I hit patch it four times, and you can see that it's using in, uh, up to 64 channels on uh, Universe 1. Now let's look in the visualizer, you can see our heads here. Now at the moment they are um, positioned in the visualizer, one behind the other like they're in a queue and uh, we're going to move them so they are spread out a little bit more so we can see the effect that we're having on them. Um, so we're going to hit patch, uh, go to view viz which is your view visualizer uh, and we're going to uh, visualize, look at visualizer heads, these are all the heads that are in the visualizer. Um, and for, So we're just going to change these all to zero which put it's Z position at default. So now you, they're all piled on top of each other, so you can only see one at the minute. Uh, so now we're going to go uh, minus two, oh, minus two, enter, uh, minus one, enter, one, two. So now they're nicely spread out. And that is that's purely that's not going to affect your lights unless you're using the visualizer. It's just so you can um, so you can see clearly what's going on. Now, right, the effects engine bit. So the default uh, layout in uh, Magic Q is uh, your, all your palettes, and these palettes are as follows. You've got your groups here, which is your group of fixtures, uh, and they're pretty self-explanatory. These are positions. Uh, these are gobos, the type of beam. That's why it's called beam, and this is your color palette. Um, now, so for these sharpies, uh, you, you, I always start uh, at the top and go anti-clockwise. That's just the way I operate. I just find it easiest. Um, so you want to select the heads that you that you want to manipulate. So in here, you've got the uh, you, you've got uh, the groups of heads. So if I had, so I've got some uh, sharpies there. If I had some Q washes there or something, and I had some UVs here. Um, this is just the types of heads and you can go further into that by uh, viewing heads inside that group. So if I want to look at the sharpies, I can go view heads and there's four sharpies there. So one, two, three, four. Happy days. Um, look, for this demonstration, um, we're going to select all of the sharpies so we can just select the group there. I'm going to hit locate which brings them up to the uh, dim up full and uh, their default position. Um, so this is just so you can, uh, well, I'm sure you all know what a locator is, just so you can see what uh, what the light looks like in its default position at the uh, at its dimmed full position. Now, as I say, I start um, I'll start here and go anti-clockwise. So let's for this demonstration, let's have let's have them red, but I want to have the inside two here. I'm going to have them orange. So I click on all sharpies, turn them all red. Uh, and click back on the back on here because, as you can see, these options change at the top because um, you can have color CMY, uh, RGB, ASI. That's a color normal. It's normal palette that, that, that the Sharpie knows. Right. Anyway. Um, so yeah, click back up on the group here. Uh, view heads, and I'm going to click on that one. Shift and that one, and I'm going to change them to amber. So you can see in the visualizer, you've got two on the outside that are red, and two on the inside that are amber. Happy days.
All right, so now I'm going to change uh, the gobos. So remembering that I've selected those two heads there, I'm going to click back on the group, which changes the options here, go back onto view groups and select all the sharpies again. Now I've selected all the sharpies, so I'm going to change the gobo to this gobo here. I see the, the uh, visualizer represents that. That's a nice the, the pin cross uh, gobo that you've got on the, on the clay packet sharpies. Uh, now we get to the movements. Now again, you can see that I've got all the sharpies uh, selected, so I can now add movements to these up, far right, far left, up, down, far down, and so on and so forth. So uh, you know, so you, you can see what's going on there. Now, so if I wanted to record those movements, I would that center, which is okay. I'd start. I say let's start far up. So that's that's our that's our start position there. Now, if I wanted to record that, I'd hit record, bang that onto playback one, and that's now recorded as a queue in queue stack one on playback one. Uh, a queue stack is uh, a group of queues, and we've just recorded this as a queue onto queue stack one. Um, so that's our start position. So back onto layout one. Let's hit all the sharpies again, and let's go down. So that's going to be our next position. So again, record that, hit that onto Q stack 2, double click into the Q stack again, uh, and we now can see that there are two queues in that Q stack. And if we bring that fader up, sorry, let me start, hold that a minute, clear the programmer, because nothing will happen until you clear the programmer, bring that fader up, and now we can see in the visualizer that those are chasing between those two positions and you can manipulate the speed and the crossfade uh, position so the crossfade is the uh, the fade between the two cues and uh, the chase speed is self-explanatory uh, so obviously the faster I make that the faster it's going to start chasing right happy days right so obviously you can now start adding onto that queue stack and we will add We'll start that again so you can see, but we're going to record that onto the same queue stack. So we select the group that we want, we locate it, we add the colours, so let's turn them all amber this time. And let's change the gobo to the triangle, and for this queue we're going to have them all going left. Which as you can see there is stage left, so let's turn it around to, uh, as you look at from the stage. Let's record that onto the queue. So make them go right, record that onto the queue, clear the programmer. That is that is such a uh, a big thing when you when you're programming. If you forget to clear the programmer, you're only going to see the last queue that you've just programmed. Um, so that's a key thing. Now bring that up, and we can see that it's now chasing between those four positions, and we can see those queues if we double click into the queue stack here. Happy days. Now th this is a very, um, it's a personal way of doing your own movements and your own kind of, um, uh, and making up your own effects. But uh, Magic Q uh, does have its own effects engine as I've mentioned before. Uh, and the easiest way to kind of use that is uh, select your heads, locate into your default position, select the colours that you want. So let's have, um, I don't know, yellow and green, that looks good doesn't it? So let's have the inside ones green. So you click. So I said, go through that again. So click on that. Shift. Click on the next one. That will uh, let you uh, select multiple heads. Turn them green. All right. And remember that we now need. To, if we're going to affect all of these heads, we need to select all of these heads. So all four sharpies. Add effects. Now this is your effects engine, and these are all the different attributes that you can affect. You can add, uh, uh, use your own user attributes. Um, which you can program in yourself, um, and you've got um, intensity, position, color, beam, uh, any attribute which will add the same effect to any of those four attributes, um, and old, which I'm led to believe um, are attributes that are already pre programmed into the heads, but I never use them, so it doesn't matter. Uh, so for this, we're going to add a position effect. So we click on position, uh, and as you can see, you've got all of these effects here. Um, and as I've got all of those sharpies selected, if I hit figure of eight, that's the head started moving. Now this, uh, once we've once we've selected that, you can see that this is the effect programmer, and you can program how fast that goes. Uh, pretty much the same as the chase um, and the effect speed, and so the effect crossfade. 
Sorry about that. Don't know what the fuck that was. Um, and where was I? Yeah, sorry. Um, and effect segments that you can have it doing. They can have them doing the same thing or give it its own segments. So you can have, I think, over here. Well, have a play with it and see what it does. But this is where you can kind of uh, make all the effects your own. Right, well once you've got something that you're happy with, so let's just change that for... There we go. Right, so let's record that. So you hit record and record that onto the cue stack there. Or, so to add that as part of your cue, or you could record it and have it as your own cue on playback. Well, on any of these playbacks here. So if you have a look at that as a chase, Let's look into that, Let's slow that down a little bit. So it's a pretty effective way of, uh, of building up a, a, a light chaser with some simple lights. So, uh, yeah. If, there, if guys have got any questions or the, the anything uh, that you think I haven't covered, then uh, feel free to tell me because I'm kind of new at this whole tutorial thing. Um, but I'm more than happy to kind of show you guys through it, do a bit of patching for you. Um, if you want to email me, it's uh, twitchmusicuk at gmail.com and I'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions. Uh, thanks very much.